20 years since GM first hit our markets, the promises of early research remain unfulfilled. Roundup Ready technology dominates the GM market in America, and now the story of seed would return to the courtroom as the full implications of patent law became clear to the world. And I'll never forget when my wife and I left our door here, the front door, my wife turned around and said, I hope to God I have a roof over my house, uh, over my head tonight when I come home. That's how close we were to lose everything. We had put everything on the line. And I, I feel sorry for the farmers that didn't have that opportunity and have lost their farms, hundreds of them. Canadian farmer Percy Schmeiser had been growing canola, saving and breeding the seed for 50 years. But in 1998, some of his seed was found to contain the patented Roundup Ready gene. Whether it's seeds blown in from your neighbor's field, pollen flow by the wind or from bees, if that happens to you, you no longer own your seeds to plants. They immediately, under patent law, become the ownership of the corporation. Percy was taken to the Canadian Federal Court for patent infringement. His defense, that the GM presence was accidental, was rejected by the court, and in 2000, he was found guilty. They had no record of us ever obtaining their seeds or buying their seed, but they said because our neighbor grew it and contaminated us, we should not have been using our seed. We ought to should have known. Well, that's completely impossible. A canola seed, whether it's genetic altered or not, or organic, it was identically the same unless you do DNA testing. To date, over 140 U.S. farmers have been prosecuted for the infringement of intellectual property over seeds. Thousands more have been investigated for so-called seed piracy. What are we supposed to do with seeds? Seeds are supposed to be planted, multiplied, used, further adapted, etc., etc. That's exactly what's not allowed from the corporate mindset. The corporations sell us the seed or license us to use the seed in a specific way, in the way they are interested to use it. Full stop. By controlling the seed, you control the farmer. By controlling the farmer, you control the whole food system. And that's the legacy of genetics in farming. Today, the GM market has spread beyond North America and established itself in Argentina, Paraguay, Brazil, and now in India. Whilst the GM industry claims to be increasing yields and improving lives, more and more farmers are reporting new and unexpected problems. In the Indian state of Gujarat, hundreds of thousands of farmers persuaded to grow genetically modified BT cotton, a crop which produces its own pesticide, found that in time the pests developed their own resistance to the crop. The rise of these super pests has forced the farmers to use ever stronger pesticides. Instead of controlling pests and controlling weeds, you are getting super pests and super weeds. So even in the narrow domain of weed control and pest control, the technology is failing. With the rising cost of seeds, fertilizers and pesticides, many farmers have been forced into a spiral of debt. And the spread of GM cotton has been linked to a tragic increase of suicides among Indian farmers. In Argentina, Thousands of small farmers have been forced to leave their land, unable to compete economically with highly mechanized monocrop farms. Many non-GM farmers have found it impossible to avoid the Roundup herbicide blowing in from neighbors' land and see their crops and their livelihoods perish. And with the mass exodus of farmers from their land, farm biodiversity has decreased still further. Traditional crops have been replaced Herbicide use has risen dramatically and hard-learned knowledge and farming systems have been elbowed aside. With the loss of diversity, you lose your security because that diversity is synonymous with security. It also means li improved livelihood, it means improved nutrition, it means improved division of labor. All this would be lost to one crop. We have to realize that, that um, Diversity means survival. Diversity means being able to continue to produce, being able to continue to be a farmer. And without that, I think it's, 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 it's very important to realize that it's, we, we're simply not being able, we will not be able to produce the food we need if, if we allow that this kind of diversity is further eroded.